In this video, you are gonna learn a little bit more about how we can configure YARGs for these command line interface applications. We're gonna learn how to set up the commands, their descriptions, and the arguments. We'll be able to set various properties on the arguments, like whether or not they're required and others. Now, before we get into any of that, I do wanna pull up the YARGs docs so you at least know where this information is coming from. You can get it by Googling NPM YARGs. We're gonna to go to the first page, which is the YARGs package page on NPM. This has the documentation for YARGs. Now there is no table of contents for the YARGs docs, which makes it kind of difficult to navigate. It starts off with some examples that don't go in any particular order, and then eventually it gets into a list of all the methods you have available, and that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna use Command F to search the page for methods. And right here, we get the methods header. This is the one we're looking for. If you scroll down just a little bit, we start to see an alphabetical list of all the methods you have access to inside of YARGs. And we're looking for dot command. This is the method we can use to configure all four of our commands. We're gonna specify which options they require, if any, and we can also set up things like descriptions and help functionality. Now, in order to get started, we're gonna pull up the terminal, obviously, and the Atom editor. And all we need to do is make some changes inside of app.js. This is exactly where we're gonna get started. And we're gonna start with that add command. We wanna add a few helpful pieces of information in here that's gonna one, let Yargs verify the add command is ran appropriately, and two, let the user know how the add command is meant to be executed. Now we are gonna be chaining property calls, which means right before I access .argv, I wanna call .command, and then I'm gonna call .argv on the return value from command. Now this syntax probably looks familiar, this chaining syntax, if you've used something like jQuery, a lot of different libraries support it. Anyways, once we call .command on yargs, we're gonna pass in three arguments. The first one is the command name, exactly how the user is gonna type it in the terminal. In our case, it's gonna be add. Then we're gonna pass another string in, and this is gonna be a description of what the command does. Some sort of English readable description that a user can read to figure out if that's the command they wanna run. Add a new note, perfect. The next one is gonna be an object. This is gonna be the options object that lets us specify what arguments this command requires. Now, before we get into the options object, Let's go ahead and add one more call right after command. We're gonna call dot help, which is a method. So we're gonna call it as a function and we don't need to pass in any arguments. When we add on this help call, it sets up YARGs to return some really useful information when someone runs the program. For example, I can run node app.js with the help flag. The help flag is added because we called that help method. And when I run the program, you can see all of the options we have available. We have one command, add, add a new note, and we have a help option for the current command, which is nothing, it's just help. And the same thing holds true if we do node app.js add with help. Here we can view all of the options and arguments for add, which in this case happens to be none because we haven't set those up. Let's go ahead and do that back inside of Adam. In order to add properties, we're gonna update this options object where the key is the property name, whether it's title or body, and the value is another object that lets us specify how that property should work. So in the case of title, we would add title on the left and we would put our options object on the right. Inside of here, we're gonna configure three properties. Describe, let's do that one first, it's super simple. Describe. Describe is gonna get set equal to a string, and this is gonna describe what is supposed to be passed in for the title. In this case, we can just use title of note. Awesome. Now, after the describe is in place, we can go ahead and configure demand. Demand is gonna tell Yargs whether or not this argument is required. Demand is false by default. We're gonna go ahead and set it to true. Demand, true. Now, if someone tries to run the add command without the title, it's gonna fail. And we can prove this. We can save app.js, and over in the terminal, we can rerun our previous command, removing the help flag. And when I do that, you see we get a warning, missing required argument title. Right here, you see the title argument. We have title of note, which is the describe string we used, and it's required on the right, letting you know that you have to provide a title when you're calling that add command. 
Now, along with describe and demand, we are going to be providing a third option. This is called alias. Alias lets you provide a shortcut, so you don't have to type hyphen hyphen title. You can set the alias equal to a single character like T. When you do that, you can now run the command in the terminal using the new syntax. Let's go ahead and run our add command. Node app.js add. Instead of hyphen hyphen title, we're going to use hyphen title, which is the flag version. And we can set that equal to whatever we like. Flag title will be the title and hyphen hyphen body will get set equal to body. We haven't set up the body argument yet, so there is no alias, but if I run this command, everything works as expected. The flag title shows up right where it should, even though we use the alias version, which is the letter T. And now that we have our title configured, we can do the exact same thing for body. We're gonna specify our options object right here, and we can provide those three arguments. What I would like you to do is set up describe, demand, and alias for body. Set describe equal to whatever you like, something like the body of the note. Set demand equal to true, and set the alias equal to the letter B. Then over in the terminal, run the help command to make sure that the body shows up, like title did right here. Then go ahead and run add with the body argument, but use the shortcut version, the B flag. Take a moment to knock that out, run the commands from the terminal, and when you're done, go ahead and click play. How'd it go? Hopefully you didn't have too much trouble getting those three options set up. The first one is describe and that one's pretty easy. Describe is gonna get set equal to a string and in this case, body of note will get the job done. Next up is gonna be demand and to add a note, we are gonna need a body. So we're gonna set demand equal to true just like we do up above for title. And last but not least is the alias. The alias is going to get set equal to a single letter. I'm going to use the letter B for body. With this in place, we can now save app.js and over inside of the terminal, we can take a moment to rerun node app.js add with the help flag. When we run this command, we should now see the body argument showing up. And you can even see it shows the flag version right here, the alias hyphen B body of note and it is required. Everything looks great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run add node app.js add passing in two arguments t i'm going to set that equal to t and b setting it equal to b when i run the command everything works as expected a new note was created with a title of t and a body of b with this in place we've now successfully completed the setup for the add command we have our add command title, we have a description, and we have the block that specifies the arguments for that command. Now we do have three more commands to add support for, so let's go ahead and get started doing that. On the next line, I'm gonna call dot command again, passing in the command name. Let's go ahead and do the list command first because that one's really easy, no arguments are required. Then we're gonna pass in the description for the list command, list all notes, excellent. Next up, we're going to call command again. This time, we'll do the command for read. Read reads an individual note. So for the description for the read command, we'll use something like read a note. Now, the read command does require the title argument. That means we are going to need to provide that options object. And I'm going to take title from up above, copy it, and paste it below. Now, as you probably just noticed, we have repeated code. The title configuration just got copy and pasted into multiple places. It would be pretty nice if this was dry. If it was in one variable, we could reference in both locations, right here and right here. Now, this is gonna be your challenge for the video. What I want you to do is fill out the remove command call to command. That means you're gonna set up remove the description and the options. It only requires the title. So the options are gonna look identical to what we have here for read. Then what I'd like you to do is pull the body object, what I have highlighted right here, and the title object right here into separate variables that get defined up above. And you can reference title options and body options inside of the command arguments. Right here, you would put title options like this. And right here, you would put body options. Now I'm gonna undo that so we have the working code in place. 
You can do the same thing for read. Read only has the title, so you only need to reference the title options variable and remove, which you're going to add, only uses the title as well. So you just need to add the title, setting it equal to title options. Now, since we've added these other commands, we've actually gotten access to more help features. If I run node app.js with help, you can see our other commands have shown up. So once you're done with the challenge, make sure remove shows up here as well. Then try to remove a note. Use the alias for title and use the regular version for title, which is hyphen hyphen title, making sure everything still works as expected. Take some time to knock that out. That means you're going to call command for remove, set up its arguments, and then you're going to move these objects, one, two, three, and the fourth one that you're going to create out into separate variables that can get referenced everywhere they're required. All right, pause the video, knock that out, and when you're done, click play. How'd you do? I know I left this one a little open-ended, but that's the goal of these challenges. As the course progresses, I want you to make more decisions about how things are done. Now, in order to get started, we are going to call command because there really is no way around that. Just below where we call the command for read, I'll call command again, this time for remove. Now, the remove command is going to have a description. We'll stick with something simple like remove a note. And we are going to be providing a options object. And in that options object, I'm going to set title equal to title options. Now, I don't have title options created yet, so the code would currently fail, but this is the general idea. We want to create the title options object once and reference it in all the locations we use it. I can take title options and add it here for read, title options, and up above for add, I can cut out the object, putting it in the clipboard, and I can replace it with title options. Now up above, I can create a constant called title options, and I can set it equal to that object that I just cut out to the clipboard. Right here, we now have the title options in place. And this is going to work as expected. We have the exact same functionality we did before, but we now have the title options in a separate object. Now, we could also do the same thing for body. It might seem like overkill since we're only using it in one location, but if we're sticking to the pattern of breaking them out into variables, I'm going to do it here as well. I'm going to cut it out, adding it to the clipboard, and I'm going to reference body options. Now, up above, I can create that constant body options, setting it equal to the object I just cut out. And with this in place, we are now done. We have add, read, and remove, all with their arguments set up, referencing the variables defined up above. With this in place, let's go ahead and test out that remove command. I'm going to list out my notes using node app.js list so I can see which notes I have to remove. I'm going to go ahead and remove the note with the title of flag title and the note with the title of t using node app.js remove. Let's go ahead and use our flag first, t. We're going to remove the note with a title of T. And there we go. Note was removed, prints to the screen. And if I use the up arrow key twice, I can list the notes out again. And you can see the note with the title of T is indeed gone. Let's go ahead and remove one more note using node app.js remove. This time we're going to use hyphen hyphen title, which is the argument name. And the note we're going to remove has a title of flag title. When I remove it, it says note was removed. And if I rerun the list command, I can see that we have three notes left. The note was indeed removed. And that is it for the notes application. In this application, we learned a lot of new things. We learned how to create command line tools. We learned how to use third party modules, how to use global modules, and how to create our own files like notes.js that have functions we can use inside of our application. We also took a look at how we can access the file system, which is exactly what we did with our notes data.json file. Here we used a couple functions to encode our JSON data, save it in a file, and then read it out when someone reran the command. That let us store data in the file system. And when I run a command like node app.js list, fetch that data back. That is the end of this video, and it is the end of the notes application. The notes app is a great start. We learned the basics of Node, but now it's time to learn more about asynchronous programming and how we can fetch data from third-party APIs. That is the big topic of the next section. 
I'll see you in the next video where we're going to go over arrow functions in more detail. It's still going to be part of the notes application, although we won't be updating the app itself. We're going to work in the playground folder to explore how arrow functions are different from the regular ES5 functions you're probably used to. Stay tuned. I will see you then.